Blood is the foundation of many life-changing therapies, whether it's for cancer, rare diseases or trauma. Yet companies like Teramo Blood and Cell Technologies believe more can be done to unlock the potential of blood. Today, we're joined by its president and CEO, Antoinette Gavin, to discuss their goal of making life-saving therapies accessible to all. Antoinette, thank you so much for joining us here in beautiful Davos. It's a pleasure. Likewise, thanks for having me. So we're going to be talking about healthcare in this conversation, but let's start with you. What was your experience in accessing healthcare services growing up? I was raised in a small village in northern Michigan, a town of about 400 people, farmers, immigrants. And healthcare was, if you had an accident, you got to lay on the couch the next day. And I saw my father struggle with untreated diabetes, uh, leading to kidney failure and all those complications, and the difficulties that my mother uh, had navigating the system. And I knew there was a better way to do this, particularly after living in many countries and working all over the world and seeing the difference in the availability of the technology, let alone the funding and the awareness of what's possible. So I guess this really planted the first seeds of this interest of yours in tackling health disparities. Absolutely. And then later in my career, I was in a role at General Electric, uh, doing a lot of health policy advising work, if you will, with customers and internally. And the Institute of Medicine shared the first uh, report on health disparities. And sharing startling statistics like uh, independent of socioeconomic status, if I present at the hospital with heart pains, I'm four times as likely to die as my husband, simply because I'm female. So I, I had to understand what could be done. And that spurred me uh, to go back to school later in life, as they say, to get a master's in health law and policy, focusing on unequal outcomes and how do you address that. Um, as an example, I did a lot of work in water because without clean water, you can't have healthy communities. So that applies to blood and cells as well. This is an essential medicine as described by the World Health Organization, but it's not talked about often. How did you bring all that experience, everything that you've seen to your current role as a CEO at Teramo? I, I think I saw we have this powerful technology that collects and separates blood and cells. So when I say that, I pull the platelet out of your blood, and that may be used when someone has a car accident. And they may need 100 pints of blood, or 100 units, I should say, of platelets to stop that bleeding. But when I collect just the platelet, I can give you back the rest of your blood so the donor doesn't have the impact. We also have the ability to collect cells. If you know someone who's battled leukemia or a cancer, and has had to do a stem cell transplant, it's probably been done on our equipment. And then we have other equipment that actually can grow cells. So as a cell is collected and fed into a CAR-T development, people looking for permanent cures, I have to take that fragile cell and turn it into a therapeutic level dose. So when I give it back to this person who's sick, their own immune system doesn't kill that little bit right? So when I think of all of that technology, it was shocking to me how little I knew of it until I came to this company. And we focused so much on innovation around the equipment and the services we brought to bear, but we didn't always get out in front and innovate around how we talked to stakeholders, how we built uh, patient access mechanisms, because if I have all this technology and it never gets into the treatment of patients, it's just waste. It's just cool stuff. Blood is so prevalent in so many healthcare settings, but it always feels like we've been taking it for granted. Yes, it's a great observation. If you think of it, 
you generate nine pints of blood a day. One pint can save someone's life. And today, there are still hundreds of thousands of women who die in childbirth because they bled out. And I think of all of, why would that happen? But blood is taboo in so many cultures. Uh, it's not a polite cocktail to topic, you know, hey, what's your type? I'm A plus, by the way. Uh, but I think it's just unknown. In some countries, you have to bring your family to the hospital if you might need blood to make sure there might be a match. In others, you pay for blood in advance. In some countries, you need blood, but even in well-established healthcare, uh, wealthy countries, you don't have sufficient donations because blood expires. We've talked a lot about blood, but let's actually focus on cell therapies, which is, of course, also a very big part of your company. Yeah. And let me talk about the continuum a little. So I've talked about the basics of collecting blood and separating blood for something like trauma. We also have the ability to filter things out of blood that don't belong. So the more we learn about rare diseases, about our own genetics, there are things that you, that cause the problem. And as we research these rare diseases, we can filter out for a very specific thing. So the simplest example of a filtering like that, uh, we have a doctor who filters blood out for a cholesterol instead of putting people on Lipitor, right? That's a very basic example. But one we spend a tremendous amount of time in is sickle cell disease. It's a genetically uh, inherited disease for people of African, Southeast Asian, Middle Eastern descent. So you can see where it has traveled, if you will, around the world. But the blood is shaped like a sickle instead of a round blood cell. So our technology is able to filter that out and give you a healthy red blood cell back. That's pretty powerful stuff. And it can prevent chronic pain. And now you see people who died for lack of treatment using this treatment and a combination of hydroxyurea, which is a very accessible drug, uh, to come together and live full lives. So we spend a lot of time understanding how do I connect policymakers, funders, taking the money and the time and energy that's already there and connecting it a little differently. Um, we're uh, building a project called Wakanda in Kenya and Uganda to start with that does exactly that and takes these treatments to the areas that need them the most. So through all that work, you get a tremendous amount of data. And that data helps the cell therapy researcher because they're trying to figure out how do I modify the source material so when I build this eventual drug, it's got the highest impact for that population. So there's a data thread, and then other parts of our portfolio are used to actually grow the drug so I don't have to do the manual mixing under a hood. I can put the product in, hit a button and go so that my researchers aren't babysitting something 24 hours to make sure that it's viable. It's done safely, repeatably, and all of that technology are the, they're the building blocks of that cell therapy manufacturing. I want to pick up on the fact that Terramo is a very global company when it comes to, you know, infrastructure, for example, and access. How are you trying to navigate that? Yeah, it's a great question. I will say I've been startled at how there are more similarities than differences. So in the sickle cell example, in the U.S., only 2% of sickle cell treatments were getting red blood cell exchange to manage their disease. So 85% of the treatment they were getting was because they showed up at the emergency room in desperate pain and had to be admitted to hospital. That's not the path that you want. So it is somewhat independent because these diseases are rare. They're not well known. And while we've been treating patients for 20 years, we always focused on our equipment, not getting the word out, if you will. Um, another example uh, in the UK, we've worked very closely with the National Health Service 
for their existence, really. Uh, unfortunately, there was a death related to sickle cell disease in the UK. So we brought together nurses, stakeholders, hospital practitioners, and put together some very specific policies that with relatively little funding have now almost tripled the service that you have in the UK to treat that population. Because at the end of the day, Teramo is just one part. You need to onboard businesses and governments to help drive this change and increase further access to these therapies. Yes. Um, recently, I was in uh, New York at the United Nations event uh, where we pulled together people in the sickle cell space. Well, now that we have a way to help people live, it's becoming a higher on the awareness scheme. So each one of these you have to treat differently. And our challenge is there's so many possibilities. How do we keep furthering the science, the partnership, connecting a clinician with a government policymaker, and making sure that our precious healthcare funding is optimized? Antoinette, we've covered a lot of ground already, but maybe if we're going to have this conversation 10 years from now, what do you think should be the major topics on the table? What do you want to be discussing? What I'd like to be discussing is more energy around how we further the application of this incredible technology. What are we filtering for next, right? We know we've just begun to understand our genes. These are the building blocks of personalized medicine. And I would love that we are not talking about the basics because there is adequate blood and people understand it's important to donate because I may not need this today, but nine out of 10 of us will need blood at some time in our life. And everything in healthcare starts with a drop of blood. So let's build those basics into our global health policies and then Let's spend our energy innovating on the next problem we can collectively solve. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. You certainly made me see blood in a very new light. Thank you so much. My pleasure. In healthcare, many things start with a drop of blood. That's why companies like Teramo are investing in its future in order to serve unmet medical needs and improve patient outcomes.